on one o'clock for a uh, apartment fire. South by Celix store, third story apartment. Cooking fires are the leading cause of home fires in the United States. I'm here with Kirsten. We came out to visit her family, and uh, we stepped outside, and Kirsten ran over, and she's like, "There's a, a fire down the street. Something's on fire. I see smoke." So we all ran out, and luckily, I had a couple cameras with me, and we were able to catch a lot of what happened. The people that live here now have nothing, no place to go. Devastating, it really is. There's everybody I've talked to is just dumbfounded that they can't even believe it that, it, that it's down. A hundred yards away from the fire, you'll find these burnout embers, and they posed quite a threat last night, especially with this gas station next door. South Dot Selig, a small town in central New York, named for the river which flows through it. Its many historic buildings offer a glimpse into what was once a thriving community. On a cold day in December, one of its most iconic buildings, the Cox Block, was lost in a tragic fire. I, I remember that I was just um, <clears throat> helping my brother with um, unloading and loading some things from the downstairs, and I looked, I happened to look down the street and I saw the smoke, and I ran down uh, to get a closer look, and uh, I came back to, to share the, the news, and it just, you know, it couldn't, you know, couldn't believe what was happening, um, and I, I don't think at that point any of us, you know, thought that that was going to, you know, okay, there's a fire, and okay, help should be on the way, and things just, it happened so quickly, the fire got so big. And it got to the point there was not, it was, it was really about uh, managing the effects. And um, those of us who were there just, there was nothing we could do but watch. And it, it just it didn't seem, it didn't seem possible, didn't seem real. Um, you know, especially in a, a town like this where things kind of, they really do uh, change at such a slow pace. Something that had been there, a, really a cornerstone uh, in some ways, literally, of the community. I couldn't imagine that not being there. It's just not the same coming into town and, and taking that turn there um, and seeing a, a field of green where it used to be this uh, large building, a, a testament to the community's history, um, sort of a, a hub, if you will, of community activity. Um, <clears throat> it was a place where people would share uh, community gossip uh, to kind of get the lowdown on what was coming, um, what was happening in the community, and it was home to people, it was people's homes. Um, so in uh, what feels like a blink of an eye, and it certainly in the, in the moment it took a, a lot longer than that, um, things changed, which uh, <coughs> change doesn't happen quickly here. We're just saying it's coming out the roof. Look, see this? See the smoke coming out of the under the roof? That means a plane. Oh man, look at that! See, look at look at that. The roof must be on fire. Hopefully, everybody got out. <gasps> oh my god! Oh my god! No, it's okay. Oh, oh my god! I hope nobody's standing underneath that. Once uh, the firefighters opened up the door and introduced oxygen back into it, basically uh, seemed like it exploded. Uh, fire went from one end of the building right to the other and actually blew out a, a third floor wall.
this this corner over here caught again um, like the next day and uh, they have kept Kevin to come out and fix it you know put it out put it out put it out so did you notice it's still smoking over there oh yeah days later I was at work I work at uh, Onondaga County Correctionals and uh, received a about four phone calls because I can't keep my phone on me and I uh, came back in and my phone looked like it was just blown up and looked at one email picture or text picture and I saw the fireballs running down the fire line or the power lines and smoke rolling off the top of our house and I was like wow and this was halfway through the fire and uh, you know it's time to go time to get home thank God Dreiter Fire Department had one guy sitting there on our lawn spraying our house at all times. Um, come home and it's uh, right up until 11 o'clock at night. Still, just amazing. Fire is very scary and just amazing looking. But very thankful for everybody's help. I walked by there probably about 10 or 15 minutes after it started right there. First saw some, saw some smoke and I saw some flames right there. I figured that, that place is going down. <laughs> My name is Jack Schieferstein. I'm 27 years old and I've lived in Otsielik, South Otsielik for uh, about five years now. Uh, the Cox Block, uh, it, it was pretty ingrained in everybody um, here in South Pot. Uh, the people that lived upstairs, it's a tragedy. It, it absolutely is. The businesses that were here, everything it's it's a total loss to to the building the history the town the community this was a hub this was this was our our the hub to our wagon wheel this is where we came I have a little construction background and um, I'd like to explain quickly um, balloon framing back when the building was built sawmills were milling out lumber they they weren't 8, 10, 12, 16, 14, dimensional lumber as we think of it today. They were they were random lengths, 24 feet, 30 feet long, some of these some of these boards. And now they would just stand those up as 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 a as a stud in the wall. Now today every single wall we build has a bottom plate and a top plate. Now that is a fire block. If there's an open cavity, the fire's gonna travel. 1890 I mean, some of this wood, if it was soaking wet, it would still burn. It's, it's old hemlock, hand-hewn beams, and this is what's left of it. Have you seen a lot of businesses come and go? Um, yeah, well, sort of. I saw the, they built the banks and uh, built the place right next to it right there. And, uh, that's about it. Cause I don't know, they built a bunch of stuff right here. Real small buildings like they're like banks or something like that. Well, all I can say is as someone who is, maybe you would be considered a newcomer to the area. As long as I've lived here, I know how much it meant to the town and to the people who have been born and raised here. And everybody, I'm heartbroken that it's gone and can never be brought back. I look at it every time I go by, and I that beautiful building. What a shame. Just such a shame. It's it's heartbreaking. Very heartbreaking. And with all the wonderful history of some of these buildings, you hope that uh, it never happens to any more of the older buildings. You know, we like to keep the history of the town. It means a lot to the people. <laughs> The history of the village. Isn't it? Everybody's affected by it. Everybody. The farmer who comes here on his way through, you know, grabbing a soda, the kids at school, gladding. <laughs> the whole town.
great place. I remember it very much when I was growing up. Um, coming up when I was a kid, going to the store, uh, sneaking out when I was a senior to go up on lunch break and not making back on time, but you know, it's been a great memory through many years for everyone around this community. It'd be sorely missed. I like the store because all I do is stay my stuff on my door and I'll be running the store right there. When it's here below, when I'm burned down, that broke my heart right there because uh, everybody's got a grocery because uh, so so traveling about five to ten miles right there to get some groceries. <laughs> right over here there was uh, right by the stop sign there was a, a deck and it had a wheelchair ramp. And uh, oh man Ever since we moved up here, my son was two years old, and uh, man, he used to take off up that thing, turn around, come flying right back, and that was his shortcut. That's every time we came to the store. That was that was something he did. We had a, a, another boy. You know, the it, it, one follows the other. You know, monkey see, monkey do, and they're asking questions about it. They want to know what happened. One memory I have about the old store is something that really exemplifies what it means to come from a small community. Um, <clears throat> that when I was, you know, this is over 20 years ago now, uh, my mother used to call ahead on, say, a Saturday uh, to let them know that they were sending, that she was sending uh, me or my brother over to the store for, um, you know, the Saturday paper, a gallon of milk, and a pack of cigarettes. Uh, now, <clears throat> I dare you to, to show me you know, a place in, in today's society, uh, certainly in a larger community where, you know, something like that would happen. Um, and it's really, uh, talks to the, um, the close-knitness of this community, um, how even uh, now many years after I've officially left, uh, it's still, you know, people are looking for those connections, um, you know, being someone's uh, kid, cousin, grandchild, uh, brother, sister, um, it kind of gives you an in to the community. and. Uh, People are looking to make those connections. You know, I always, I, when I was in high school, I always thought, you know, I'm going to move away, going to go to California, you know, go somewhere, Hawaii, some big city. I don't want any of the small town gossip, anybody knowing my business, you know, that's for the sheep. You know, I had kids, and it totally changed. That's what I wanted. I wish the people who live here can find a place as soon as possible. I hope people reach out. If you have a spare room, I hope you offer it. Clothes, uh, couches, TVs, that's great to give them. But a roof is the most important. If they're living in a hotel, then none of that is really theirs. The whole town came together to raise funds to help the victims start a new life. Four months after the fire, a new store was opened. It was a much needed step towards rebuilding this community. We are all the authors of our own destiny. With positive thoughts and actions, we can create a better future.